Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Paratech's webinar on the multi-force. This is one in another series of our uh, webinars that we've been putting together while we're in these unfortunate times, uh, being at home and, and being in, of course, you guys being in the fire stations and the firehouses and the rescue community. But um, we put these webinars together to go over our products, go over some designs and, and detail and, and a little bit of training that we can all uh, communicate back and forth. Um, my name is Robert O'Donnell and I am the Northeast Regional Manager for Paratech. I am excited to be here this morning. Uh, webinars are new to uh, me and the, and the rest of my team, or our, our team, the team that I'm on. We're, uh, we're used to having hands on and I, I looked at the, the people that are registered uh, this morning. I saw a lot of familiar faces and, and uh, names and, and uh, from the, the cities and states that I cover. I'm responsible from South Carolina to Maine. So uh, big territory, but I'm used to being out there with hands on. So the whole talking to the computer and, and uh, knowing that you guys are hearing me is, is new to me. And uh, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. So uh, today we're going to talk about the multi-force. Um, and uh, you'll see right here, I just put up uh, uh, the upcoming webinars that we'll be doing. Uh, you see we've already completed the vehicle stabilization and the maxi force. So we're doing the multi-force now the fifth and we're scheduled to go all the way through June 16th right now, all the way out to the strut driver. So uh, we're hoping that you'll register. At the end, there'll be a, a link that uh, the RSMs will send you. The regional sales managers will all be sending to you, thanking you for your attendance, and of course, asking if you have any questions. Um, my counterparts, the other regional sales managers right now, are um, on the chat portion of this answering questions. Please be patient with us. Again, I said we're used to using our hands and being hands-on, and uh, not so much with a keyboard, but more with a strut or an airbag. So uh, know that they're there. Um, please ask questions. Uh, give us your comments. Let's generate some thought and some questions. Um, I, again, it's going to be a review for many of you. Many of you that I saw on the, the list of attendees today already have the multi-force. So uh, please accept this as a review and I hope you pick up some pointers or some tips or some explanations to uh, how it was designed and built and, and the maintenance of it. Um, I would like to start off with this warning that this PowerPoint presentation is for informational purposes only. It's not suitable for hands-on training taught by a qualified instructor. Regular hands-on training is necessary to become proficient. Please make sure that uh, any improper use of any equipment may cause serious injury or death. Um, you know that you guys are uh, your lifesavers. You work out there in, in rough environments and in the real world and you use this on a daily basis. But um, this webinar is, is focusing on the design and the construction, uh, the build of the, the multi-force, um, the maintenance of it and how we use it. Please always remember to think safe, act safe, be aware, and always lift an inch and support an inch. We lift an inch, crib an inch, we lift an inch, strut an inch. So uh, please keep that in mind. A little background. The, uh, the Paratech is a, a manufacturing, we're a manufacturing company of rescue equipment out of Frankfurt, Illinois. We're very proud of the products that we make. And then we're always looking at, at current technology to enhance our products and, and make new products. And, and you know from going to FDIC and other shows that we attend that uh, annually, our engineering team always designs and builds new equipment for us. Well, um, years ago, our engineering team, they accepted the challenge to create a bag that is a single bag with two different or two separate lifting stages. So it's one bag that looks like two bags and it always, always operates off of one hose and uh, one air source. So uh, there are many round bags out there. We all know that there are round bags out there, but there's no other bag like this. Uh, while they were working on this again, it, it was a concept that they had an idea. They knew what they wanted. They wanted to come up with that single bag that lifted in two different stages, that telescoped up, if you, if you will. But they had to design not only they, they had the concept and how to how to make it what they wanted it to look like. But we're a manufacturer. These engineers had to come up with a machine that would build that. And uh, I'm proud to say that the end result was the multi-force. And it's a bag like no other. There's no other bag like it out there. Um, during this time that they were engineering and designing it and testing it, they turned up a whole bunch of other ideas like a remote placement base that we'll get into the details of later. There's a, a handle that is used and incorporated into it so that you can both transport it to the incident and even use it as a positioning device to put the bag underneath the load so the rescuer doesn't have to get up underneath there. Um, we're very proud of the, the multi-force. It's uh, got rave reviews. Um, it has been out for a few years now. Um, there are many of them in service. Uh, many large departments are, are putting them on the, their trucks. Uh, it, it will not take the place of Maxi Force. Where we still need a, a thin flat bag to get in these special places and these tight places. Um, 
the manufacturer, <clears throat> the the bag that we have is is still manufactured. There's there is someone at our factory today working at the machine. We our factory is open. The men and women in Frankfurt, Illinois, are, are making our equipment right now. They're sending it worldwide, and it's saving lives worldwide. But uh, we are still open. The factory uh, workers are there. They've taken the proper steps to make sure that they have distancing in place and that um, all the, the right equipment is in hand, uh, in place that we brought in to make sure that everybody is safe in the environment uh, at the factory. So I'm uh, very proud of those people at the factory, the engineers, and, and, and the, the rest of our team. Um, we have a very good team, and they're very passionate about making sure that the equipment that you all get is safe and uh, and the best out there. So right now, we're going to talk about the multi-force remote placement bag. There's a picture of it there on your right. The multi-force has three bags in its series of multi-forces. It has remote placement, the basic, and the compact. So we'll talk about the basic and the compact later, but right now I want to talk about the remote placement. Um, right now, the picture you see on your right is the, the bag with the saddle bag that's got the control equipment in it, to the two air hoses hooked to it with the handle, the wheels, everything assembled right there, ready to go for the rescuer to take it to the incident. The only thing he would need is some type of air source. Um, usually we use a cylinder, of course, but we could use supplied air off of a truck or, or even air from, um, from another um, fixture somewhere. But this bag is a 31 ton bag and it lifts 26 inches. It has handles to the left and right and uh, all the different pieces that, that are designed and that you see in that picture there. I'm going to go over piece by piece to start with the bag. The bag again is only one bag, but it has two stages. So when you look at that picture there, it looks like it's two bags. It looks like there's a bottom bag and a, and a separate top bag on top of it. But no, it's actually one one bag when we go to shows or I go to training it's very common once we get the airbag filled to this um, all the way up like this that someone comes up and they look for a seam in the middle there where it goes all the way thinking that right here is a seam or that there's a connection there's no connection there's no flange it doesn't interlock together it's one bag um, that one bag has an internal um, safety uh, relief valve in there that'll make sure that, that we always operate safely and it's made of neoprene with a continuous weave of an aramid fiber. So it's a very strong bag. Again, it lifts 31 tons and it lifts up to 26 inches. You see it's got a wide base. We'll talk about that more in detail. And that wide base right there is what gives it uh, more stability than the common bag. You also see it has a flat top. So when we are used, what we're used to in airbags, especially with our multi-force, uh, excuse me, our maxi-force bags, are that the bags can tend to pillow as they go up and pillow on either side, like a football, we say. So um, this multi-force maintains a solid base at the top. It also lists in stages. Now, when I say in stages, and uh, the pictures that, that um, we're showing here that I'm showing, please know that we don't only have three stages. It telescopes up evenly as we insert air into it and as it lifts the load. I just happened to take a series of three pictures here. Uh, this is Nigel, Mr. Nigel, our head trainer at the factory. Uh, the pictures on the left were taken in the backyard here and he took the pictures for us and you can see it on the left that uh, first stage is getting some air in it and it's lifting a little bit. In the middle picture here, the first stage is completely full and now the relief valve is open to start lifting into the second stage. And now this, of course, is the first and the second stage fully <clears throat> inflated. So again, um, at 26 inches, our airbag is rated at about five tons. That's a very conservative figure. Um, the engineers were conservative in figuring it. So we can say at 26 inches, it lifts about five tons, approximately five tons. And that 31 tons, like with any of our airbags, just like with our ma uh, maxi force bags, it's only one inch. So again, um, it's one bag, one hose, one button to push, and it'll be one lift. Very simple and easy operation. The end cap for the top of the airbag right here is a, approximately 11 inches in diameter. And I remember we said that it remains flat. Underneath that neoprene there is a, is a plate of aircraft grade aluminum. So that aluminum is rigid. It maintains a nice surface area. It gets that surface area up to the load. It is uh, has a uh, it uh, has a neoprene coating over it. It's vulcanized with a neoprene, neoprene rubber, so it protects the aluminum. It also matches the rest of the bag. It has the yellow X on the uh, top of it, so we can use it for uh, centering. Um, when we're trying to position the airbag up underneath our load, we can know that's going to be the center of our lift. 
and just got a simple driven warning label on it around the top there and you see the different warnings uh, that we can always refer to and always keep us safe remember we're always going to be safe and we're always even with the multi-force as stable as we know it is we're always going to lift an inch and support an inch the multi-force remote lifting base the base itself is very wide you see it has more or less four arms that come out the four arms add stability to a bag that we already have stability on. I mean, it's already a very stable bag. I said that there are many concepts and ideas that our engineering team came up as they were designing this multi-force for years. One of it was this base. So this base has four yellow sliders on each end of the arms that stick out. And those sliders are really just pieces of poly that are attached to it. They're replaceable in case they get worn, we can replace it. But what it does is it reduces the friction between the surface that we're putting the bag on um, when we're sliding it in. Once we slide it in and put it in place and we get it ready to do our lift, this piece that you see right here, this round, this big circle in the middle, that's actually the bottom of the multi-force bag. That's, that's the bag itself. Um, another aluminum flange in there. And what it does is it, it allows and, and affords for the airbag itself to maintain contact with the surface that we're lifting off of. So we didn't just slap a uh, poly base on the bottom of a airbag and, and rely on that poly base to, to be the, the contact with the surface. The engineers designed it so the bag itself is making contact and that the outside remote lifting base is around it that's adding that support. You'll see the bolts in here all the way around are brass. We always use brass in our construction of our bolts. And of course, we'll talk later about our air hoses, as you all know, because we don't want to add to any sparks and in, in any of your incidents. We don't want to be the cause of any sparks because of our equipment. Um, on the right there, you see the, the wheels. The wheels are integrated into the base. Again, another idea that came up over those years of design and uh, working. They're heavy duty wheels. They afford us to be able to transport the bag to the working area. It makes it very convenient. They can use the handle that is integrated into the bag as well to uh, tilt the bag over almost like a hand truck or a dolly and take the bag to the, uh, the job or to the rescue that they're going to perform. Here's our, our telescoping placement handle. You'll see it has four different positions over here on your left. It also has a D-ring handle on it. So that D handle allows for us, us to uh, get a good grip on the, the, uh, the handle itself to transport the bag. And then of course, when we use it for placement, to release it from the base, there are two gold tabs on either side of the handle. We just lift either one of those and it separates and removes itself from the base. And then we can use it to deploy. The D handle also has a button right here on the left side of our ear screen of that handle. And when you push that button in, it allows the D handle to flip up as we see over here in the pictures to the left. Uh, another uh, idea the engineers came up with to reduce the profile so it's more convenient for us to store inside your rigs. Uh, the handle itself does come off. You'll notice over here that the handle is uh, detached from the multi-force remote placement bag. Here's another close up of it. It's, uh, it connects right behind the wheels. Uh, some of you notice that are, uh, that are used to it and uh, are, are familiar with our rescue air cushions that that is the same actually collar kind of device that we use on, our, on the low pressure hoses on our rescue air cushions. So uh, again, another idea that engineers came up. Now, some people want to know, well, why would you make the handle removable? It's, a, it's another part. Well, it, it becomes very handy if you're going to make a high crib stack and put this multi-force on a high crib stack. You don't have the handle leaning there in the way. If you want to use this um, multi-force like we'll show later on in a horizontal plane, you're not hanging it down, let's say, between two containers with the handle hanging in your way. So again, it just gives you another option. If you want to leave it attached, you can. If you want to remove Move it and use it as a unit standalone without the handle and, and place use the placement of the handles to put the bag in place then uh, then it gives you that option you also notice on the right here uh, getting ready to lift the school bus they want to get the multi-force bag under the load the load of course the school bus they're going to lift off that front axle there when they slide it up underneath because the handle extends they have plenty of leverage to slide it up underneath there on that concrete it works really really well with those sliders uh, really uh, a little bit of friction there and sliding it you, you can hardly tell and it slides right across you'll also notice in this picture that the rescuer attached the hose 
before he slid in underneath there. Very important tip there, always something to remember. Uh, some of our members get excited sometime and slide the bag under and forget to put the hose on, and then we have to pull it back out to uh, put the hose on. So always remember to make sure we attach the hose before we place our bags under the load. The insertion height. What I'm referring to here is the height of the bag. And do we have the gap or do we have the um, enough room to place the bag underneath our load? Uh, as you can see, I used a level and a ruler here to demonstrate that the bag's height, height is about three and a half inches. So I'm going to need a gap or a clearance of about three and a half inches to insert this bag. Sometimes you all aren't afforded that. You see many things. So uh, one of the things that members do is they take a maxi force bag and they put the maxi force bag, as I see over here in the right picture, and they hook it onto, if you will, um, or nest it on top of the multi-force with the handle, the remote placement handle attached over it. So you just push that remote placement handle down over the top of it. It holds it in place. You don't have to do any modification to it. When you get our airbags, the airbag comes with a uh, multi, comes with the control equipment. You'll see that it comes with a dual uh, dead man controller. So we're, we have two ports that we can choose from and we can always uh, discharge from. So uh, having that separate bag there would allow for us to get a cheater, use it as a cheater bag and get a little purchase point to, to lift the um, space up to three and a half inches. Then we could insert the multi-force in there and get maybe the 26 inches if, if that's how much lift that we may need. Um, hopefully that we've captured our suspension and, and we're capturing and, um, all the placements that we need to, and hopefully we don't need a full 26 inches to make the rescue that we're working on. The, the multi-force control equipment. <clears throat> the control equipment that's included in one of your multi-force bags, if you order it as a kit, is the uh, multi-force saddle bag, the maxi-force G2 regulator, the G3 uh, dual dead man, the yellow and the black paratech hose, and an inline relief valve. These are the items that come when you order a multi-force and designate that you want the kit. So you get the bag and all the control equipment and saddlebag you see right here in the kit. Uh, you can get the bag alone without getting the kit. Some of you all already have Maxi Force Master Control Kits. The same control equipment that's in your master control kit are the same pieces that we see here, not, not the, the numbers, but it is the same exact equipment. And of course it lines up and uses and works with our multi-forces, um, all three different models. The uh, saddlebag, the saddlebag is a rugged bag, has a very strong zipper on it. There's a zipper pouch on either side. Um, on this side, you can see we've stored the dual dead man controller on the other side, the regulator and then uh, the inline relief valve right here. There's a pouch on this side and on the uh, dual dead man side that we could put the inline relief valve on either side. The Paratech hoses. Um, you notice that the Paratech hoses, we have a yellow and a black one. We always recommend that the black hose is used for supply. So we'll always use the, the black hose in, in every one of our operations. We use it as a supply. The yellow hose, because at night, if we're operating on black pavement on the interstate, um, it's got more contrast with the color of the yellow hose laying across the black pavement and going maybe underneath a school bus where it's really dark underneath there at night. So uh, we, we recommend that we use the colored yellow hose to go for the um, control all the way to the bag, from the controller to the bag. Um, our hoses have safety couplings on them. This is Paratech's latest safety coupling. These safety couplings have vented holes in the lock collar. So our couplings have two positions, if you will. When you put our nipple into our coupling, you'll hear a click. That's the first lock. The redundant safety behind it is that we have to lock this collar and that ensures that that one of the hoses don't accidentally become disengaged that this portion of the collar is not pulled back or doesn't drag across something and become disconnected so now the safety vent holes inside here let us know that when we go to open it it's going to leak air and we're going to hear that audible we're going to hear the air leaking from it and know that it's still under pressure also, if we make that connection and we don't tighten up that vented collar, then it's going to start to continuously leak and we're going to hear it. So we get ready to operate. Someone cuts the air on from the 
uh, regulator to the controller. If one of those fittings do not have their safety collars tightened, then we'll hear air releasing from it. And that'll be a reminder right there for us to know that we need to go over there and tighten that so we'll be safe and too, so we won't lose that air that we uh, we depend on so much. So we just tighten that collar back. We get it, it gets us in the habit of making sure that we use that safety device. Another good feature that we can use that for when we're complete with our operation and we want to disconnect everything and everything is pressurized up to the 150 pounds of operating pressure that the system is designed for, then this is a good um, time and a good place that we can release pressure from that system so that when we let that pressure off, it vents out, then we can disconnect those hoses safely. The inline relief valves is the same inline relief valve that we have in the Maxi 4 system. You see it on the left uh, side there. It has a, it's rated, the relief valve is rated 165 PSI, and it is always written on the side of our inline relief valve, so you can always reference that. On the right there is our Maxi Force dual dead man controller. The dual dead man controller is, uh, I think somebody's calling me, uh, dual dead man controller has uh, two uh, ports on the outside where we can a lift from. It's, uh, it's got colored buttons. The green is for up, the red is for down. It's uh, the um, relief valve is actually at 150 PSI on here and it's got an integrated lighting system. So it, uh, the LED light will um, illuminate the gauges at night if we're in a really dark space. So that is the dual dead man controller. Again, uh, the multi-force only needs one side of that controller because we only have to have one hose, but we have that dual dead man controller as a, as a standard that we use. Um, the same ones that you have in your maxi, um, in your maxi force um, kits that you already have in your master control kits. This is something brand new. I said at the beginning that our engineers are always working to design new items. This is our new preset regulator, it's a G3. I was just told yesterday that this is going to start in production in a couple of weeks, and this is what's going to come in all of our multi-force kits right now. Um, I haven't. I saw it when we had a meeting at the factory. The engineering team shared it with us. Our owner brought it out. Uh, very proud of it. We like that it's uh, quick, easy to use. We don't have to worry about a gauge. We don't have to worry about dialing or throttling up to the desired pressure. This regulator is preset at 215 PSI. So um, in the heat of the night, you all are working, you have an incident, you can put the regular CGA valve on there that you're used to that always goes onto one of your cylinders and it's got a quarter turn knob at the top. You turn it and it's ready to go. It's really kind of like a crock pot when you're cooking. You just set it and forget it and it's ready to operate. So um, once you cut it on, you know that there's 215 PSI coming out of the discharge out of the nipple right here on your left and it does have uh, a built-in relief valve as well. So um, it's, it's safe, it's easy, and uh, operates very well. And uh, I'm looking forward to actually getting mine so I can bring it out in the field and showing everybody and, and get our hands on it. I said that there are two other models of multi-force bags. There's the basic, and then there's the uh, compact. This is the basic. So what you see here is still an airbag. It's the same exact bag. It still lifts 31 tons and about five tons once it gets completely up at 26 inches. And it still has the handle to the left and right, but it does not have the remote placement handle. So why would we offer that? Well, there are some people that, that don't have a need, um, some industry that doesn't have the need for the remote placement handle for the telescoping handle on it. So um, the engineers came up with a rugged handle here that's adjustable that we can tighten it down with. It's got a, a foam grip here, makes it comfortable for the hands to carry. And underneath all the canvas on this end is the nipple. So the nipple maintains its, uh, its protection because of course our brass, our nipples and our fittings are brass um, so that it protects it so that when it's storing in the vehicle that it doesn't get damaged anyway and it's ready to go especially at three o'clock in the morning once we need it on the scene you guys are at so the difference between the basic and the remote placement is the handle the um, this basic has a carrying strap and not the handle the compact however you can see does not handle ha have the handle either it has the same carrying strap and the same nickel nipple protection provided in the basic but it doesn't have the left and right handle so what we did or what the engineers did was they designed a base that has a reduced profile 
And while that was important is because not every fire department, of course, has a heavy rescue or a big ladder truck that has the compartment space to be able to put one of the other bags in. So this afforded it to be able to use in a standard compartment on the pumper or rescue pumper. And uh, it's really been a popular item with some smaller departments that don't have a lot of uh, manpower that really were never in um, in the business of having operated uh, operating airbags or having airbags as a resource. Now they can get this one bag. They can lift 31 tons with it. It stores neatly in their rescue engine, um, and it's it's just a, a easy solution for them to be able to still have a safe, a manageable, and strong airbag to operate within their district. An accessory for the multi-force is the positioning light. This positioning light is made out of aircraft grade aluminum. It goes right onto the base here and it takes the place of the handle. So when you get the positioning light, we would just take that handle out with two screws on either side and set this light in place of the handle there. The light is LED, it's intrinsically safe. Of course, we, we say we always wanna make sure we keep a safe environment. We don't wanna add to that. So we made an intrinsically safe light. Um, the LED light illuminates the area when you slide it up underneath. Again, imagine a, a dark bus um, in the middle of the highway on the interstate, no lights around. This uh, positioning light will illuminate the area where we find our purchase point. And also we can use it as a positioning device. So we can imagine uh, a bus and we're gonna go to the frame of the bus underneath. If we slide the multi-force up on this side, when the light is in place here, the light shines straight up and the light is in line with the centering line on our multi-force bag. So when the light on this side hits the frame, then we know that this side of the bag is directly underneath that frame. Then all the rescue would have to do is twist and rotate the bag until the light on the other side hits the frame. Now both lights are shining straight up onto what the purchase point is that, that the rescuer has picked and he knows it's got the correct placement and he didn't have to crawl up underneath that load and get up there and put himself in danger or any more danger, of course, that he would already be to uh, put that bag in place. It also is faster and uh, quicker. And again, any any light on any rescue scene is always um, uh, always needed. So a scenario. So the scenario they've come up with this year is we're going to run through a scenario real quick and we're going to use the remote placement kit that we see on the left. Our scenario is that the sedan has ridden or broadsided a tanker, kind of ridden, uh, did, kind of did a side underride on that tanker. But not only is that vehicle stuck underneath that tanker, it just so happens that it hit a pedestrian. That pedestrian is under that sedan and their arm is underneath the wheel. So we've got a full blown incident right here. So uh, a victim is underneath the car, has his arm or leg underneath the rear wheel and they're stuck underneath that tanker truck. So we're bringing the multi-force in and the very first thing we're gonna do is capture suspension. And the reason we're gonna capture suspension in this scenario is after we do that 360 of the vehicle and we put in our wedges or step chocks to stop the initial crush, because of course that person is getting crushed by the sedan, is they're gonna use a Paratech ratchet strap at the 12 o'clock position on either rear wheel and capture that suspension. So that when we bring the multi-force bag in to lift the car up, that the wheels don't travel downward and maintain contact with the victim. As soon as the bag is put under the rear or wherever the purchase point is that, that the rescuer chooses, uh, at that purchase, excuse me, if the suspension is captured, then as the bag is lifted and it starts to lift the bag, the suspension of the vehicle automatically go up because it's, it's all captured and, and ratcheted down as one and it lifts up. Remember, we're not pulling the, when we capture the suspension, we're not pulling it down on the victim because we put those step chocks in place first. So those step chocks are still handy. They still work great, but they're not going to be our primary stabilization. Our primary stabilization is going to be a Paratech strut because those step chocks, depending on the height of the ones that you all have made for your rigs, they're not as high. That airbag lifts 26 inches. So once we get past the lift of those step chocks, we need a, a stronger strut that's going to hold it once that vehicle comes off of the ground. So here he's using a Paratest Nigel again, our lead trainer at the factory. He's using a Acme thread strut on either side of the vehicle making a purchase point. And he's going to do that uh, and he's using that, those struts for two reasons. One, 
to stabilize the vehicle as the primary to keep it stable while it's on the ground as we're getting it set up and, and to stop the crush as well, but also to use it to chase the load up. So as the airbag lifts it up, it's going to maintain contact with the, the um, vehicle and make sure that nothing falls anymore on our victim underneath. He's going to, in the pictures here, you see he hooks the yellow hose to the multi-force bag, and then he slides it underneath with the remote placement handle, making sure that he's found the position that he wants. Once he does that, we're going to make our connections on our control equipment. We always start from the incident back to the control equipment, and, and uh, that's the way we like to do it. So we made the connection at the bag first, then we've taken our inline relief valve. We put the inline relief valve in our dual dead man controller. The reason we put it in the dual dead man and not on the bag is so that when we operate the dual dead man controller, we don't want to have to crawl underneath the vehicle to have to cut the inline relief valve off or on if we need to operate it for any fashion. If we have it on the dual dead man controller, then the person that's operating the controls kind of just like being at the pump panel on one of your fire engines. Uh, the person that's operating it has all the controls right there. They're ready. So the inline relief valve um, still does its job. It still a, has a relief valve 165 PSI. It's still an on off valve with a quarter turn, but it's right there at the rescuer who's operating the controller's hands. He's got all the controls right there. After we hook the inline relief valve into the dual dead man, then we'll hook the yellow hose that's going to the multi force into it. Uh, the nipple end goes into the coupling of the inline, and then our black hose that I say we use su for supply, we'll hook the male end of our black hose into the intake side, which is the bottom down here of our coupling for our dual dead man. Then we hook the regulator up to the cylinder. We cut the cylinder on here. Of course, this is the G2 regulator. Um, this step is going to be a, a lot faster. It's, we're not going to have as many slides to show you when we get that G3 controller out there. I'm, again, I'm really looking forward to getting mine. So it'll be preset. We just hook it up to the regulator and then hook the hose to it. Um, so we hook it up to the regulator here. Then we hook the hose to it, make sure that we tighten up that safety vented collar. Then we will cut the cylinder on all the way. Then we will dial up the knob on the G2 regulator up to 150 PSI of operating pressure. And then we can take the quarter turn valve. You see the quarter turn valve here is, is in the off position because it's against the flow of air. In here, we've cut it on. Now we know that with it dialed up to 150, the air is coming out of the regulator, reduced down um, from the cylinder here. It's a 4500 cylinder reduced down and now it's going out here at 150 on the discharge side in line with the quarter turn valve. Now that we've got everything set up, um, everything's been safety, we're ready to go. Now we can start our lift. In, the partic in this picture here, you can see that the first stage lifted all the way and now the second stage is starting to lift and we have plenty of, of room and clearance now to be able to get our victim out from underneath the tires. Again, we, we captured that suspension so the tires went up with the vehicle. Plenty of room right there. Um, now we're going to go over, I'm going to share some pictures you, uh, with you and, and just go over the different points for our bags. Again, uh, anytime we get up, you see right here on the right, our, our quick notes for a, a one bag lift. We want to do our 360. We want to place our primary mobile uh, stabilization. We're going to pick the best uh, spot from the multi-force, set up your primary stabilization, and then we're going to connect the hoses. Uh, connect the hoses to the controller, connect the air source, and we're going to lift it. We're always going to main, maintain safety, and we're going to lift an inch and support an inch. So uh, I get many questions about this um, school bus lift right here. I was not there. You notice they use a ratchet strap over the top to catch the suspension of the bus. They've used Paratech Acme threads on either side. Uh, you may notice that there are Paratech Maxi Force air hoses go into our struts here, the Acme thread struts on either side. Um, that was not to lift with, that's just to chase the load. So they've got a VSK controller that is putting air into them. And as the airbag, the multi force lifted the bus up, the air at no more than 25 psi is coming from the VSK controller and going into these struts to follow that load up. And then all the rescuer has to do is spin the collar on the strut. So the air is just enough to push and lift the strut up, not enough to lift the load or the bus up. It's only 25 PSI. The maxi force, excuse me, the multi force did all the lifting here. We see that this one is up on cribbing and they've taken the handle off of it. Uh, always keep in mind the center of gravity. 
um, the conversation I've had with people before is, is the engine in the rear or is the engine in the front? I'm hoping the engine's in the rear. I don't see any vented louvers back here and, and I can't tell if that's a radiator or not. But uh, again, because of the center of gravity, I hope that the engine is in the rear. We've kept all the weight back there as we lifted it. Um, but it's a it's a neat picture. It's interesting. It's really nice to see uh, the amount of lift we uh, that the amount of lift that the that in this training scenario that the members that were uh, putting this together got. Again, it shows the ability of the multi-force. Uh, a couple of other one bag applications here. Over on the left, Nigel at the back of the factory, we had a dump truck. I get a lot of questions as, as uh, a lot of times about that dump truck. Does that dump truck actually have an engine? Is it, it, it did you did you guys take that picture and it doesn't have the engine? No, it's, it's a full engine inside that dump truck. It's a big Caterpillar engine. It's plenty heavy enough and it's plenty load. I, I said that our uh, engineers were very conservative when they said that at full height that it would lift five tons. So that um, bag right there is at full height. That's at the 26 inches. Um, he did not capture the suspension when we lifted this. Um, we, we weren't in the we weren't doing a full um, exercise or training. We were just going over the bag and the lift. You'll notice that in a lot of these lifts, there is not the proper stabilization, and that is intentional because we we are only focusing on the bag. We always lift an inch, crib an inch, or lift an inch and strut an inch is what we like to do. So in the middle here, you see that this multi-force remote placement with the handle there is used on a dumpster, and they've used conventional air, uh, excuse me, conventional cribbing to uh, crib up each side of the dumpster and capture the load as they go up. Um, still works, you know, each contact point of that 4x4 four four is rated at 6,000 pounds, and it looks like there's only two contact points, so that's 6,000 here and 6,000 there, 12,000 pounds that uh, that they're able to capture with this crib stick stack on this side. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to carry it over there to, to do that, that stacking of the cribbing. Um, the advantage to using those Paratech struts is that or um, is that we put the struts up on either side and we know that those struts hold 80,000 pounds up to four feet and that's without the four to one safety factor with the four to one safety factor there's 20,000 pounds on either side and the rescuer would only have to spin the collar versus having to play Jenga and build that crib stack but the crib stack still works um, they've got a nice and square nice in line they did a real nice job and they use their wedges so again uh, just another single point lift with the multi-force lifting the dumpster straight up. Um, this dumpster could be empty and this dumpster could be full and this um, air multi-force bag would still operate in the same capacity, in the same manner. Over here on the right, um, this is a, a way to use the multi-force that I really wanna talk about, just focus on here for a little while. I really like this lift. This lift right here is lifting from the rocker rail. Um, we inserted the uh, multi-force bag to the rocker here Usually, uh, remember your center of gravity. Uh, you know the B post is usually the center on the passenger vehicle, and we know that the engine with the heavier weight is to the right, to the front. So you notice that they've gone to the right of the B post. They put it here, but the scenario here is that there's a victim, a pedestrian underneath the vehicle. So when we go to our training scenarios and people set these scenarios up for us, the victim is usually under the car, and the car is sat back down on the victim nice and square we usually don't actually run over the victim when we're setting up uh, an incident or a drill we don't want to mess up the mannequins and for all the other reasons you're aware of so um in real world that you guys see uh someone that's riding a bicycle or moped when a put when they're struck by a vehicle they get rolled up underneath that vehicle because the forward motion of the vehicle running over that uh, victim rolls them underneath and all that stored energy is under there not only is it stored energy, um, but there's a motorcycle or a bicycle that usually ends up on top of the victim under there, and there's no purchase point under the front of the vehicle to be able to get a bag lift. So this particular way that they chose to do this bag lift here is from this rocker rail works great. We still maintain three points of contact, the multi-force being one point of contact here. Then on the other side, we've got the two wheels on the driver's side. So we still maintain three points of contact as we lift it. It lifts a full 26 inches. And when we lift it, again, this passenger vehicle, we're lifting half the weight. Uh, it probably weighs, we'll just round it up and say about 3,000 pounds. So 
this multi-force is probably only seeing 1,500 pounds. And uh, you know all the way up, again, we say that this at 26 inches conservatively that we can lift five tons. So uh, we're way within the capacity of what that multi-force bag can lift. It'll lift it fast, it'll lift it steady. Uh, again, it's one bag, it's one hose, it's one button. It's a quick lift, it's a quick pick, and we have enough room there underneath here with clearance that we can get to the victim itself and we can even get the moped or, or the bicycle out if need be. Um, remember to make sure we crib those back tires. Um, set, throw that parking brake on real quick if you have a chance to, and uh, make sure that we uh, lift an inch and we're going to strut it too as we go. Again, for the sake, this picture is for uh, training. Uh, it may have even been a demo where they're focusing on the bag and not fake focusing on having the stabilization struts in here. Now moving on to a two-point lift. We've used multi-forces here to lift this military vehicle. You'll see how heavy the suspension is in this vehicle. Even though both bags have lifted 26 inches, the lift, uh, the amount of clearance under these tires, and even though they're off the ground, it's not, uh, it's not very, it's not as noticeable. But that's because these, this military vehicle has very heavy suspension. Had we captured the suspension with chain in this um, scenario here, we would have got a lot higher lift off of our bags. The frame itself, the bumper of the vehicle is, is way higher than when the lift started. But the wheels themselves, of course, the suspension traveled with it. Um, in the picture here, you'll see that this multi-force is a, a compact unit. It doesn't have the remote placement handle. And this one over here, as a matter of fact, there's the strap of the handle that goes across that holds the compact in place. And then this is the remote placement with the remote placement handle. You, if you can imagine, the rescuer could have slid this one underneath here from a from a purchase point back here by just sliding it over into the grass where this one he had to crawl up underneath the vehicle and place it. Uh, a couple of more pictures of two points list two point lifts um, in Virginia excuse me in, in New Jersey here this is a tank recovery unit um, so we've got two multi forces again this is a compact and this is remote placement on top of cribbing this is the side view of it just to show how much lift was on those tracks um, very and, and impressed us as well. We were impressed just as well as the uh, the members at the base were uh, Fort McGuire there. So um, joint base. So um, that was a lift right there with uh, two points. Um, here's two points on the trailer. Uh, there's one right here on a set of cribbing. And then back here, if you can look behind the second axle, there's another um, bag back here. So when you do the two points again, you can use the dual dead man that is in the kit. You can have each bag operating off a different discharge side and controlled off of the uh, dual dead man. This excavator here, this is at the Southeastern Extrication School in Darlington, South Carolina. Uh, we've used four multi-forces, four, one in each corner of this, and we've actually done two two-point lifts. So on this side, we did a two-point lift coming into a dual dead man controller, and on the other side, the other two bags in the rear go to a separate dual dead man controller um, for a, a separate lift. The reason we did it like that, we could have used Ys in conjunction on the discharge side of the duel, but this afforded the person that was running the lift more control by being able to have each bag run off of a separate discharge um, on the two individual dual controllers. It also afforded for the rescuer to have a separate air source on this side as he did on the other. And we want to make sure when we're using um, this much, a, a 45 minute cylinder will fill four multi-force bags, but uh, to make sure we had enough air, we used one separate system on this side and one separate system on the other side. So air is an air resource is another reason we did it, but the main reason we did it was to have more control over the lift as we made the lift and we could ind independently, or the person that was calling the lift could independently control each bag as we lifted this beast. Uh, horizontal shift. The multi-force can be used in a horizontal position well in a, in a horizontal plane. This is the same dump truck I get the questions about if there is an engine in there. So um, make sure that you set your multi-force up um, in the direction that you want to shift the load away from. So the base is wanting to shift the load away from the jersey barrier and push out on the wheels of the um, dump truck there. Um, we put the the end cap of the multi-force right against the hub of that front wheel and push it over again. This is the, the dump truck that has the engine in it. It pushed it and slid it right away. Um, you can see the different stages here. 
It was placed in a little bit of cribbing up underneath there to hold it up. So we maintain maintain the contact with the hub and the center of the multi-force. And then you can see uh, the first stage and the second stage and then completely um, all the way intact with the first and second stage um, completely out at 26 inches. Um, different horizontal positions that we can use it in here in Canada. Um, they use it in, in a rail yard uh, at the, one of the ports to push two flats apart. Uh, this is the FDNY subway simulator at the Rock. Uh, we placed it in there. We took the remote placement handle off and we used this handle right here, uh, the left or right handle to hold it down in place. As the rescuer put air on it, it started to push the subway uh, car away from the platform and the rescuer was able to pull the mannequin out. And this is a real picture that was sent to us from uh, Connecticut where there was a actual uh, rescue. So this is a real a real incident. This is not a scenario. Uh, this person was trapped between the house um, in the snow and the vehicle. And you can see a nice job they did cribbing the base back here between, uh, they got a solid surface onto the house. They spread that weight out across the house, knowing that they're probably hitting foundation and maybe two by four joists in that wall, not familiar with the construction of that building, but they did spread the load out. They did make sure that they padded it out. They also did a nice job here by putting that, it looks like three quarter board, um, to make sure that this the multi-force is getting contact with the whole tire. So they pushed it out and uh, made the grab with the lady. So really nice work there. Um, out here in California, not out here in California, but I'm um, in Charleston, South Carolina, but uh, this picture right here is actually of a lift and a shift. This multi-force bag is under a, a working yard uh, car at the uh, at the rail yard in California. So this multi-force was placed under some cribbing in the middle on the axle of the trucks of the train and the lift was accomplished. And as it was lifted, another multi-force was put between the platform and the car to shift it. So what they did in this training exercise is they actually unrailed this car and then they re-railed it, showing how to use the multi-force to lift and shift this rail car back and forth. So it's a yard car on a in a rail yard in California. A daisy chain. A uh, daisy chain is an option that we can use in our maxi force bags. And I just wanted to show that it's still an option that we can use with our multi-force bags. Um, we don't see this very often in, in uh, multi-force bags. We don't, um, we, we usually don't have four heavy rescues that are one incident that are going to bring out all the multi-force bags. Um, but in the event that we did, um, we could do a daisy chain with two bags or we could do a daisy chain with three bags. What it really is doing is we're using Ys, as you can see in this picture over here, and hooking the Y to the bag and daisy chaining or looping, if you will, from bag to another with our air hoses. The last bag, but since it will be a dead end, whichever bag you choose, wouldn't have to have uh, a Y in it. It would just hook directly to the bag itself. So in this scenario here, we've got a container, um, which is say that it was a very large load, and maybe we just want to level the load. We wanted to level this lift somehow. We were using this to make sure that we um, got the air in evenly and got it to a point where all of them um, are at the same amount of airflow going in there and uh, and we're lifting it level. So the red hose is going to the controller and then from there is daisy chain and looping and all four bags are lifting sino simultaneously and making sure that they uh, level the load and disperse the air throughout the bags as it lifts. So it's referred to as daisy chain. I just wanted to show you that it's still an option with your multi-force bags. Uh, cleaning. Uh, cleaning the multi-force is the same as the maxi force bags. We want to make sure we use soapy water only. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, the components are clean and make sure all the dirt, oil, and grease are out of it. Uh, make sure that the um, sand and the dirt, and a lot of times when we get in accident scenes, uh, little pieces of glass get into the couplings and the disconnect with the nipples. You can put them in a, a bucket of water, soapy solution, and uh, clean them real well. Um, sometimes WD-40 works good to get it off, but we don't want to leave that WD-40 on there because then you know that the uh, the sand and grit, even in the compartment sometimes, as uh, riding down the road that you'll have, that um, they'll stick to it. So if, if we use it to, to clean with, the WD-40 to clean with, make sure afterwards that we still rinse it in hot soapy water to, to get the remnants of that WD-40 off. Um, if the cleaning solution um, or rinse gets into the lift bag uh, through the nipple, make sure that we thoroughly dry it. Uh, don't forget that that lift bag has a nipple uh, protection uh, 
a cap over it that we can put over a protective cap that we can put over that nipple to make sure that we don't get any water in there or, or the best uh, of our ability and that we don't get in contaminants, dirt, sand, uh, whatever it is into the airbag. Um, the storage is again the same as the uh, maxi force bags. Uh, they could be stored um, from 70, uh, 75 degrees. So uh, same thing as our uh, uh, same same design, same uh, uh, same material as our maxi force bags there. Um, as a follow up, um, you'll be getting a follow up email from your local uh, sales manager. Um, please ask any questions there to them. There'll be links to uh, to this webinar and links to the other webinars we've already had. Um, there'll also be a, a video on there that we're going to share. Um, please know that you can see uh, any of this stuff on our website as well. And uh, so our RSM is going to reach out to you and uh, check on you. Uh, we really want to uh, thank you for taking your time to, to spend with us this morning and, and go over this multi-force. I'm interested to see what the chat was, uh, what the different questions were. Um, we hope that you enjoyed it. We know that these are trying times and uh, um, as a whole, as our country and, and all the other countries are, uh, are, are working hard to get back to normal. We can't wait to get back to normal either to, to visit you. We have a lot of friends. We've made a lot of relationships and uh, we're really proud of our products and want to get them out to you. So uh, please stay safe. Um, keep your family strong. Uh, do the best you can. Uh, remember, we always lift an inch, crib an inch. Um, I'm going to leave it with this screen right here up. It's uh, planes, trains, cars, trucks, military and industrial. Oh, again, my focus today was on that multi-force bag and you can see the many applications. The multi-force is a very strong bag, very well engineered, and very fast and quick operation. And I, I actually think this changed the way we operate with airbags. So it's going to change the way everybody operates with airbags. Uh, remember, it's one bag, one hose, one button, one lift. So I'll leave this up and hopefully uh, it'll generate some thought. You guys can stay on the chat and, and get some good conversation going with our, our guys on the other. And again, have patience with them. We're, we're used to using our hands on the struts and airbags. So again, thank you for your time. I'm Rob O'Donnell. If you have any more questions, please go to www.paratech.com. Have a nice day.